What's up, sisters and friends? Welcome back to the Sisters and Friends podcast. I always love a day where I legitimately have my sister and my friend on the podcast. Y'all, this girl, she thinks she's the backup option for my podcast. She's like, yeah, you just get me on when you don't have anybody. I said, that is not true. So many of you guys requested Bella to be back on the podcast, and I'm so glad you did because it's going to be such a great conversation, and she'd be looking cute today, y'all. If you're listening on the podcast, you might want to hop on over to YouTube and see how cute this girl looking. You look great. Thank you. So do you. Thank you. Even Christian said she looks so cool. So I was like, okay, well now I'm going to be doing my bubble braid <laughs> pigtails. Okay. Well, you almost matched me. I almost did. I know. Like, which was such sister intuition. And if we would have shown up with the same thing, that would have been, been epic. So funny. And uh, if my daily drills would have came in today, I know I would have worn that too. Well, I almost wore a top that you had today, and I was like, if me and Sadie wear the same shirt, then that's that would be so super. Funny. And the ball braids, yes. Next level. And we both got that new pink outfit. Next we both level. Came in the pink. Well, if it would have came it in before been extra. this morning, I would have definitely been hopping in here, looking like the whole Pepto Bismol. <laughs> Anyways. So glad that you're back on the podcast. It's so always glad a pleasure. To be here. You're not a backup. Thank you. You are priority. Thanks. You are. And people ask you to come back. And so we actually asked Instagram what they want to know about your life. And we got so many great questions and so much um, just people asking about advice, but also just fun stuff because you're so fun and so creative. And uh, you also are a well of wisdom. You have a very well, well rounded package, Bella. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay. So, first. Tell us about all of your Grammy and Oscar reviews that you have been doing. Because you have the Oscars coming up. No, I've got Met Gala coming up, which is my biggest oh, of the year. Oh, that's your biggest of the year. May. I think it's like early May, normally. Oh. And, which you're the one who encouraged me with my Met Gala last well, year. I it was like, so funny. It was so funny. And I was like, okay, then I'll keep doing this. But I love fashion. I always have loved fashion. I like like any like pop culture, red carpets. Like that's like my thing. I love like watching the red carpets and all that kind of stuff. And then last year I saw someone like review the red carpet. I was like, oh, that'll be fun. And something that like no one really knows about me that I like that kind of stuff. And I reviewed it and everyone thought it was so funny. It was the Grammys I think I did first. And then I did Met Gala and everyone was like, oh my gosh, you have to do Met Gala or whatever. So I did Met Gala. It was so funny. And then this year, like I got so many messages that are like please review the Grammys please review the Grammys I was like okay and so I did it again I did it like a week like so I was like sick oh the day that gosh. it came out but everyone it's so funny I don't even well, know why people love people it so much, don't but. like a lot of people didn't know the side of you that's like your um savage side <laughs> like as dad would call your rude but nice side um which can we just tell the story yeah you can tell okay it. this is so funny okay so it was like Valentine's Day when we were in, like, I was like in high school, maybe 2015. Yeah. And like our dad didn't often get us like Valentine's Day gifts. It was actually kind of like a rare thing. I mean, he's so sweet, but you know, I mean, not always that he like gets his Valentine's Day gifts. Well, he went all out this year and he decided to get us personalized ice cream for Valentine's Day. And so my mom's I think like, he saw it on Shark Tank. Yeah, he probably did. So my mom's was like um, Strong and Kind was like the name of her ice cream brand. And then mine was Live Original. And then Bella's was called Rude But Nice. And we and were like, like, what? Sadie and mom's books were named that? And so it was like, okay, Strong and Kind I mean, live original. But then mine, it was like, no one's ever said that <laughs> no before. One's ever no said one's that. ever said that about me. And it was just like so random. It didn't even so make funny. sense. It was like, why did you say that? And he's like, because that's like what she is. Like, she's rude, but nice. <laughs> it's just so funny. And then everyone was like, yeah, she is. I was like, oh my gosh. Okay, well, I need <laughs> a, a character shift. Well, it, but it is funny. Like, you are so nice, but you are very straightforward, like mm -hmm. straight up and honest. And it, like, sometimes that can feel well, rude I to think people like because now, it's like, whoa. <laughs> now it's just, you know, honest. But I think when I was like 13, 14, it may have yeah. been you didn't a know how to rude. See it with salt. Yes, yeah. I did not. With sugar. Yeah, with a little sugar. So now you know how to season it. But the Grammys and the Met Gala, it really showed that Ruben but nice. It was like just the it's honest like the opinion. The Grammys and the Met Gala like give me the opportunity to share the that side of me and also like the side of me that like is like okay yes I'm a Christian but I love pop culture like, yes yes I'm a Christian but I also love red carpets like yes whether it's like. 
I will censor it if there's, you know, some immodesty. Immodesty, I will censor it. But I love looking at the red carpets. I'm not opposed to watching the Grammys, you know, like that's just I feel like a part of answering that. I feel like sometimes you have to be so like you have to be all posting about like, you know, this or you have to be all posting about this, but it's like no, like life is such a balance of all these different things. And so I like to share like different sides of me that maybe like other people wouldn't share like yes. watching the Grammys, you know, or yes. watching the Met Gala and looking at the fashion on the carpet. Yes. It's just fun. So speaking of fashion, all, th- all these things, you also love art and you are right now in school for art, which is really cool. Mm-hmm. And somebody, uh, some people might not know about you. And so where did that inspiration for all of your art come from? So it's actually kind of funny. I like never was into art as a kid or anything. When I was actually in kindergarten, um, my mom got like a card home from school, a letter home from school that said like, Bella cannot color in the lines. She's got to figure out how to color in the lines. It's so bad or whatever. And my mom was like, Bella, why don't you color in the lines? And I was like, I just don't like to. I don't like it like that. Like I didn't like to color in the lines. I was like, this is how it's meant to be. And mom was like, are you sure you're not just like missing? I was like, no, 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 that's how I like it. And she was like, okay. <laughs> and that was just how I liked to, to do it. And I just was never like very like, art. I don't know if I was like not artistic, but I wasn't just, I wasn't like, I wasn't just like, oh, I love to draw and that kind of you stuff. You weren't like into arts and crafts. Like even yeah, I, I remember like, weren't you really bad at cutting or was yes, that Will's? I was terrible <laughs> at cutting and like, Every, I was just not very, like, crafty, I guess, as a kid. And then, like, I got to middle school, and I, th- I can't even remember how it got started. I just started painting watercolor one day and, like, fell in love with it, started painting all the time. I created – Sadie had, like, a little YouTube room and in her closet, and when she moved out of the house, I turned it into an art room. I started painting constantly. I love to paint. And mom, our mom, she – um graduated in art education and so she is an artist as well and she's a beautiful artist she paints some really awesome things but she doesn't do it as much anymore and she had the actually same experience as me she was never into art as a child she was like in like middle school high school thought she was gonna be a doctor or something like that and she took an art class and loved it and totally like switched her major. It was like I'm gonna major in art education whatever and to mama our grandma was like what art and that was the same way my mom was with me she was like art are you she was like really I would have never thought you were going to be interested in art but that's what I love to do and so that's kind of where my love of art grew and I feel like mom really like um really like helped me love art and appreciate art mom was like a big big influence on me for art because she always after she saw my interest in art she started taking me to art museums Mm -hmm. and like introducing me to different artists and every time we would go out of town together we would go to whatever the art museum would be in that town and she would tell me all about the different artists that she knew about and different I don't know, techniques and stuff like that. So that's, cool. that's kind of where my love of art began. She's like so good at being intentional with each kid because she has never taken me to any <laughs> art thing, introduced me to I'm like, who? I would be like, this is a whole new world. But she's so good about like knowing what each of us are individually interested in and then like piquing our interest in that and teaching yes. us about that. She and is. so I think that's so cool. Yeah. And then right now, so what year are you in school? I'm a senior. You're a senior. I'll graduate so you, pretty soon. You are close. I and am. you have been doing a lot of artwork. So mm-hmm. what's something this year that you've done that you're super proud of? So actually today I just turned in a mandala design, which is a type of art that's a radial piece. So it's a circle that you do based on they do it a lot in therapy and so it's basically like tells your the story of your life through art and through like uh color and so the class i'm taking right now is called color design or color theory and so it's all about color and how to use color to most accentuate whatever you're feeling or thinking and so i um did this piece of art it's a mandala design today and it was about kind of like a macro view of life as a christian and so it starts out with like these bright pastel pinks and violets and red violet and all these pretty tints of those colors in the middle. And then it goes out to like really saturated blue and blue green and green. And then it goes into like these deep violets and red violets and blue greens. And then from there it presses out and actually separates from the radial design to these little like 
bulbs of really bright colors and those are to simulate uh, symbolize heaven and so oh, that's cool. it's basically birth life death and then heaven wow and so that's that was so kind of, cool so i presented that today it was really i good. love that y'all sometimes after a long day of podcasting and work the last thing you want to do is go home and then cook a full meal especially if you have to go to the grocery store and get home and you know i'm just trying to spend time with honey i don't want to cook but Home Chef has made it so much easier because I can actually have a good dinner and the routine is a lot easier. They have huge selections, delicious meals that ship right to your door. Home Chef offers 30 unique recipes each week so you and your family will never get bored with the same old recipes over and over again. You choose what works best for you and they send all the fresh ingredients you need, even the butter and the seasoning. It is literally so easy. Plus they send an easy to follow recipe card, which is probably my favorite thing that they send, which makes cooking a breeze because I am a visual learner, so that's very helpful. There's no need to be a pro chef because if you have home chef, they got you covered. Christian and I like to have well-rounded meals, so we love that home chef lets us customize our proteins and sides to fit our nutrition goals. Um, it's a great way to stay, you know, healthy, but still eating good and not having to go figure out all these different meals to make on your own. They also have meals for special dietary needs like vegetarian, keto, gluten-free options, or if you're just trying to watch your carbs and calories, you can let them know that as well. We've gotten all kinds of great dinners from Home Chef. We've had like great meals like steak and potato and asparagus. We've had really nice chicken dishes that we've tried that honestly I would just not even think to make in the house. Um, we've just had so much fun getting to experiment and also feel like real chefs as we cook all these like great meals even though we had it done the easiest way possible. But if you're seriously pressed for time or you just had a crazy day and don't feel like spending any time in the kitchen, Home Chef has even quicker and easier options. They got 15 minute recipes, oven ready options, and microwavable meals that you can just pop in. Easy cleanup, no mess, no stress. So, who doesn't love that? It's a great option if you don't really feel like cooking. Uh, for a limited time only, go to homechef.com slash woe for 75% off your first box. It's pretty huge, friends. Don't miss it. Go to homechef.com slash woe for 75% off. That's W H O A, Home Chef dot com slash woe. So do you feel like you have in, in some ways been able to see God through art and through what you've been doing? Like what has it taught you about just your own life as a Christian? Anything? I think that it's taught me a lot about just like slowing down. Like when you do art, you literally like That's cool. have to slow down and like you can't paint in a hurry you can't yeah like the piece that i just did the mandala design it's all paper and wow. so it's all different pieces of paper it's over it was over 260 pieces that i cut out and wow. glued onto a piece of paper and so it's it takes so much time it probably jacob asked me yesterday how long it took me i think it took me close to 20 hours wow and so it was like so much just like sitting and being still and i think that back in high school when i did art a lot and painted constantly it took me off of my phone. It took me out of life. It yeah. took me to another place and just focused on what I'm doing with my hands. And so I think that that's the biggest thing that art's taught me, just like slow down that's cool. and like really be like in tune with yourself and like with God. And I think that in those moments when you can just slow down and work with your hands, you can really like process through a lot in your mind. That's so cool. I love that. Now yeah. I want to go paint. I'm going to be going so uh, to Hobby Lobby, yes. buy me some paint. <laughs> is you that where you like get paint? paint? By numbers. <laughs> do what? what? You need to do paint by numbers. What is that? You don't know what paint by numbers is? No. It's like basically <laughs> like, it looks like a... Oh, and it has the numbers. It has a number and you paint, paint that color and then it turns into a big awesome painting. But it's basically just like a guided painting. Oh, I do need to do that. You should do that. Because I'm really good at like, you don't have looking to really, at something and you know. relaying it on the page. But I'm not good at like... See, I was opposite. I was like coloring in the lines, good at like cutting, stuff like that. But I don't have the creativity that you have in art where you can look at a blank piece of paper and make it something beautiful. I would look at a blank piece of paper and be like... Oh shoot! Uh, how do you draw? You're really good at those? like copying. But if I something. see it, like, I can copy you can it. Copy. Yes, you're really good at that. Yes, I can I'm see not it and that. recreate it. But I cannot 
just, I mean, thus far in my life, I have not been able to see a blank piece of paper and create. But I think that that's like something God's really gifted you and that's really cool. Mm-hmm. So we got to talk about relationships because you obviously got married at a young age and a lot of people are really interested in knowing just your best piece of advice in getting married young. But even before that, let's just talk about you and Jacob started dating mm-hmm. and I announced it on this podcast. Yes, you did. <laughs> that you, you just reminded that me of. On the podcast. I was like, Bella, did you have you ever like talked about you and Jacob's like start to your relationship on this podcast? And she's like, uh, well, the day after we started dating, you said it on the podcast. So. And you were like, We can tell people you have a boyfriend, right? I was like, Well, I guess you already did. So here we are. <laughs> well, okay. I will say, though, when y'all started dating, like day one, you were like, I'm going to marry this person. So that's what I want to know. When you started dating Jacob, like, what was it about him? Because you dated a lot of other guys that you were like, I'm going to marry him and it's not going to be far out. Like, we're going to get married young. I don't know. People ask me this all the time. I'm like, I don't really know. Like, if there was people always like, how do you know he's the one? How do you know? And I'm like. I don't really know how I knew. It was just like a, I don't know if it was like intuition or a feeling, but it was like, I just knew that first day, like, yep, this is it. And it just Mm -hmm. felt safe. It felt comfortable and it didn't feel like flighty at all or like Mm -hmm. it was going to like go away. It just felt like, okay, this is safe. And like Jacob hadn't like asked me to be his girlfriend for like a week until after we'd already been like going out and dating. Mm -hmm. He didn't ask me to like, like be his girlfriend or anything but like he didn't have to because i didn't really like ever think that there was going to be a time without you know it was just like i just knew jacob told me he loved me like a few days after we started dating before he even we even like said we were boyfriend and girlfriend he just it was the i don't know how to explain it it was just like y'all are friends for so long before too but i think about even me and christian like it was kind of similar in the sense of like we had actually been talking for a couple Mm -hmm. months and actually even gone on some dates and we're dating Mm -hmm. and then um he was like hey like if people ask me if you're my girlfriend like can i say yes like because that's what we're at. I was like, oh, yeah, like, absolutely. Yeah, that's like, what we are. You are. And then it was like one of those things where it's not necessarily that it was like, oh, I know, like, he is the one. It was just that, like, I had never thought about us breaking yeah. up. Like, it wasn't like, you know, you're what never I mean? worried or like we questioning, worried, questioning anything. Like, you didn't it's just need, like, like, yes. And I think, like, so many times it's like, we need to, what is it? DTR, mm-hmm. like, determine the relationship. Like, we have to do TR and we have to do this mm-hmm. and you have to do all these things. But I feel like when it's the right person, you don't have to do those things because those things just speak for themselves. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, of course we're a boyfriend mm-hmm. and girlfriend. Like, of course, like, I love you. Of course, like, I don't think about breaking up with you. Like, yeah. you, it just feels like there's an ease to mm-hmm. it. And I think, too, like, you know, like, a lot of people say, like, you need to wait until you see them, like, in every situation, like, with their family at church and all this stuff. And, like, I knew his family. I'd spent all of quarantine with his family. Like, I knew I'd been to church with him before. We'd gone out with his, like, friends. So, like, it was like I knew him in so many different areas of life that, like, dating him wasn't, like, a super new thing. It wasn't like, oh, well, now I got to go meet his family and I got to do this. And, like, I think, say, if I would have started dating him and I hadn't met his family, I don't know if I would have been so quick to, like, yeah, we're gonna get married if I don't so know much. his family if I don't know like where he's from you know that kind of stuff mm-hmm. but he's from literally a mile from where we live and like literally their, our house and our parents house and his parents house was like literally less than a mile away from each yes. other so I'm like I just like it was just easy so and I knew Jacob whenever he mm-hmm. was like really young and had like a punk rock hairstyle and he was like um, you know, what, what did he look like back in the day? He had, like, funny hair. Justin Bieber hairstyle. Yeah, Justin Bieber hairstyle and was just a little, like, like cute little kid, you know? Like, little chubby cheeks. Mm-hmm. And then I saw Jacob during quarantine before I started dating, and I was like, Jacob has grown <laughs> up. Jacob is looking cute. And that's when Bella started to notice him, too. Bella's mm-hmm. like, trust me, I have seen. I have, <laughs> I'm seeing what you're seeing, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, and so then you got married. And how old were you? 19? 18. 18. I was, like, going to be 19, like, in two months. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So you were 18. Mm-hmm. Was that scary or did you feel confident? 
I think I felt confident and I like didn't really think about it at all being so crazy. Our parents got married young, our brother got married young. Like it wasn't super crazy to me. And then I think like literally like we got married and I posted it on Instagram, went on my honeymoon and like People Magazine posted whatever, like that picture of us and said, Bella Robertson gets married at 18. And like all the comments were like terrible, like, oh my gosh, this is terrible and all this kind of stuff. And then all the comments on my page, there was like hundreds of bad comments about it. And then I was like, wait, what? And I was like, I didn't even think about that. And then I think then I kind of got scared, like not scared that like I made a bad decision, but scared that like, oh my gosh, was this really crazy? Like, was this so mm-hmm. crazy? Does everyone think that this is crazy? Mm-hmm. But like, obviously, like none of my family, no one who knew me thought that. But like in my mind, I was like, oh my gosh, like, does everyone think that this is crazy? Like, is this crazy? You know, but obviously, well, you, ultimately, I was very confident. In my you decision. had seen like, mom and dad got married at 18 and 19. John Lincoln and Mary Kate were 18 and 19. Two mama and two bubba were 17, right? And 18 or 18 and 19. 18 and 19. Memo K and Papa Phil were they 17. They were, like, so young, like, mm-hmm. 16 when she, like, got pregnant. So, like, we've seen all these relationships in our mm-hmm. life that got married at 18 and have been married for 50 years, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, uh, I mean, as far as Memo K and Papa Phil and two mama and two bubba. Mm-hmm. And then our parents have been married for however many years, years, 30 years. And so... Like, we've seen it work, um, Mm -hmm. and it's not because, like, it's easy, but no relationship Mm -hmm. is. It's all about your commitment. It's not Mm -hmm. about, oh, what age you are. It's, like, what level of Mm -hmm. commitment do you have and what's your faith, you know? I mean, Mm -hmm. ultimately, I think that's what it comes down to. But were you – so you got married young. You have been married for almost two years. And so for people out there listening who have gotten married young, what would you say the best piece of young married advice is? Okay, I was thinking about this on the card here, and I think that I actually heard it the other day on Jenny Allen's podcast, and I was like, that is it. That is what it is. Like, that is, like, I don't often think that, like, there is just, like, one best, like, Mm -hmm. there's something that, like, you know, one statement that's, like, Mm -hmm. you know, but this statement, I was like, wow, that's so true. But it was like, don't let your husband be every single thing in your life. So, like, you have your husband who's your husband and your best friend, but then you also have a best friend, a person to work out with, a person to go to the grocery store with, a person to do this. And like, you have different people in your life to fill different spots in your life. And I feel like a lot of times young people get married and then they're like, they depend on their spouse for Mm -hmm. literally everything. And they like isolate themselves so much. And I think that community, when you're young and married is so, so important. So true. And like, we have so many like great couple friends that we do everything with. And I think like, even just a year and a half ago when me and Jacob first got married and we didn't have as much community, I did rely on Jacob for a lot of things and he relied on me for a lot of things. Mm -hmm. But I think now that we're kind of like, obviously we're a year and a half in, we're so (laughs) mature now. No, I'm kidding. (laughs) But it was like, I feel like now we're a year and a half in, we have some great friends and it's like me and our friend Grace, we work out together. So like when I go work out with Grace, he goes works out with Christian and we're like, totally fine like we're not relying on the other person we don't need each other when i when he goes out of town i stay the night with you and we spend the night the whole weekend together i'm not worried about not angry with him for going out of town i'm happy to be with you you know it's it's like i think that that was like a big shift in our relationship yeah because now i feel like i'm not so reliant on him to be with me at all times or be there like I'm okay if he yeah. has to go out of town for the weekend or if he wants to go hang out with his guy friends. I have girlfriends to hang out with. So I think that community is really important. That's and so I true. think that like community is important in every aspect of life, but in that, in marriage, it's very important. So Christian and I try to set a good example in our family of just being active and staying active. And Honey is definitely an active little girl. And we are hoping her little sister is too. Even though sometimes I'm like, you know, we could just chill a little bit more. It's fun to it's fun to be active. It's fun to be outside. It's fun to run around. And part of being active is staying healthy enough to be that way. And that's why we love AG1 by Athletic Greens. We're a big advocate of them. You've probably heard us talk about it. AG1 was designed with ease in mind 
so that you can live healthier and better without having to do a lot. And that's one of the things that Christian loves about it. He loves a product that makes him hit healthy goals that are also just really easy and obtainable considering there's so many other things in life that we're thinking about. He immediately noticed a difference in his energy and focus throughout the day when he started taking AG1. And he even got his parents hooked on it, several of his friends hooked on it. And it's really an awesome thing to get hooked on because it has 75 vitamins and minerals in just one scoop. So what's not to love about that? AG1 has been a game changer for our family and I can't wait for y'all to try it out. And if it's not for you, there's a 90 day money back guarantee, but we know you're going to love it. But that's just awesome that they put that cushion in there for you. Another easy way that makes us feel so much better is vitamin D and vitamin D3 plus K2 drops by Athletic Greens are awesome. It's super easy to take. I mean, literally, it's just a little syringe. You can put it in your drink. You can put it on your snack. You can take it straight up. Vitamin D just makes you feel so much better. It's good for your bones, for your teeth, for your heart. And every one of these bottles has 600 servings. So this thing is going to last you a long time. You can keep it in your purse. I actually keep it in my desk. It's just super simple to take out and get you some vitamin D. So take control of your health today and give AG1 a try. You can get a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash woe. That's athleticgreens.com slash woe and check it out today. And also, mm-hmm. like mom always says, like, don't put your happiness in someone else. Like they are not responsible mm-hmm. for all of your happiness. And and if you put that expectation on them, they will disappoint you. Because yeah, if Jacob wants to go hunt and you're like depend on him like he has yeah. to be there then it's like makes you have a terrible mm-hmm. weekend but you're like it's okay I'll go to City's house and we'll hang out yeah. and like we have so much fun or mm-hmm. I love how our friend group you know every time we get together the girls hang out and the guys hang out you mm-hmm. know and it's just like fun and we're like yeah. why do we re- like resort back to being middle mm-hmm. schoolers again it's like yeah. girls and guys mm-hmm. but it's like because we all have but friendships yes and we're not so de- we don't need someone by our side constantly and yeah. I think that that's where sometimes it can get a little unhealthy you say like I needed to go to the grocery store. If I couldn't go to the grocery store by myself and I had to have Jacob go to the grocery store every single time I went, then like we would never have groceries because <laughs> yeah. I would always be waiting around on him, you know, but like I'm fine to go to the grocery store by myself. But if I want to, I'll call you and say, do you want to go to the grocery store with me? We can go together or whatever. And we'll go together so and get all of our stuff, you know, and like just having other friends to do life with is yeah. so important because you do life with your spouse, but you yeah. um need other people. That's so true. People. That's so good. That will help your relationship so much, friends, if you get that. Because the the longer you put all that pressure on someone else, you're just going to be mm-hmm. disappointed. But when you you know have community other people in your life, it frees y'all both up to be who y'all are mm-hmm. and be the best versions of who y'all are. And then when you come back together, it's so fun, you know, and you mm-hmm. tell your stories and do all the things, and it's great. So I love that advice. Yep. So speaking of friendship, a lot of people also had friendship questions, and I'm just going to read this one exactly how it is. And it says, "How to break away." or create distance from friendships that are not leading you closer to God. So you mentioned now we have a great community, but there's some times in our life where we haven't. And so Mm -hmm. in those times when you were in friendships that weren't leading you close to God, how do you kind of separate without hurting feelings? Or is that even possible? Yeah. I'm not sure that it's possible to completely not hurt any feelings, especially when someone doesn't feeling like mutual about the situation. But I do think that there is just a layer that is like you're just not always going to be friends with someone forever and i think that that's something that we've learned a lot is like that we love our friends and we're so appreciative of our friends and we hope to be friends for a long time but we also are going in different phases of life and when life goes in different directions sometimes we shouldn't yeah. just fight and fight and fight to keep those relationships yeah. but sometimes we should we can just love each other from afar and I think that that's something that I've had to learn a lot and I think that I have learned and it's something that I'm like comfortable to be like it's okay that we're not friends yes we're not as close friends anymore and it's Doesn't not that we're not always friends. mean something bad happened yes um just because distance happens it doesn't mean it's bad and i think it kind of goes back to your first piece of advice with the uh relationship stuff it's like not putting expectation on somebody to like mm-hmm. have to be your best friend every season of life mm-hmm. like things change yeah times change uh relationship sizes change when mm-hmm. you get married friendship looks different when you have a kid friendship looks different like mm-hmm. friendship is always going to change a little bit but i think like giving people um the benefit of the doubt and saying like hey like 
um, you know, they might not talk to me as much anymore, but mm-hmm. that doesn't necessarily mean they love me less. You yeah. know, maybe it's just not good yeah. for this season. And I think just being honest, like, I think that if you're feeling like this friend is not, has kind of like left me high and dry, then I think just being honest and saying like, hey, is there anything like wrong or like, did I hurt you? Or like, is there something that I did that upset you? And then that gives them the ability to say, no, not at all. I've yeah. honestly just been in a really busy season of life. I've started at a new school. I've started this. And I just honestly haven't yeah. had the space to do that right now or hang out right now or something like that. And I think that from that side of it, that's the way approaching it. And I think there's also honesty on the other side. If someone says to you like, hey, where have you been? You haven't talked to me in months. You can say like, I'm sorry that I haven't been the best friend to you during the season, but I have had, you know, and then I think that you can kind of be honest both ways. Mm -hmm. I think you have to be honest in saying that I'm feeling like I'm kind of left out. And you also have to be honest in saying, I'm sorry, I just don't have that space Mm -hmm. right now, you know. I think honesty is like one of the biggest gifts you can give someone in a friendship because I always tell my friends, you know, you don't ever have to worry about our relationship because if there is ever something, I would be the first to tell you. Mm-hmm. You know, like if if there's ever something that's going on, if there's ever something I'm bothered by or I feel distanced in or whatever, like I will tell you. And I think like letting people know that up front is such a gift because then you don't have to stress out, what are they thinking? Do they think this? Mm-hmm. Do they think that? They didn't come to this. They didn't respond to that, blah, blah, blah. And it's like it eliminates all of that questioning and it's just like, okay, mm-hmm. she will be honest with me. So I'm going to take her mm-hmm. at her word. So that's so good. Yeah. Um, another question about friendship was really good and it said how to love a friend well who's in a toxic relationship and this is a really hard thing to watch a friend go through have mm-hmm. you had times in your life where you've had to watch that and yes. hey we've been the friend too yes yes and I think that again like say you just said being honest is the most like important thing you can do and I think when I have had a friend one of my best friends went through a season of just like dating and dating and dating like all these people over and over again just like kept one guy to the next and I think that what I did during that season was I was very honest but I didn't make it too serious because Mm -hmm. I think that because obviously like at the time she was dating a bunch of people but she wasn't doing anything bad she wasn't like you know doing anything that was like detrimental she was just dating and a lot of the people I didn't think were the people she was going to be with forever and I think just by like assessing the situation realizing okay like she's dating this guy it's not the great I I don't really think this is the guy for her but she's not doing anything wrong so just like being honest but kind of playful with it like like kind of like messing around with her like yeah oh you're really doing this or whatever like okay whatever you know and just kind of joking around but like telling her how I feel but I think that like just like not I think that I really wanted to be careful in that season not to push her away by saying like you shouldn't date this person or like try to control her yeah I think that during seasons of your life when someone's in toxic relationships I think you have to try to be honest and kind without being controlling Mm -hmm. or like sounding like you're trying to yeah make them do a certain thing I think you just have to be honest and You don't want to push them away, but you also Mm -hmm. want to be honest because I think that not being honest is not being loving, Mm -hmm. you know, Uh, being honest is being loving. But there's a way to be honest and be loving at the same time. And for Mm -hmm. them to feel loved by you, even in your honesty. Yes. Uh, Was I the friend? No. I was like, are you talking about me? Because I think you did that with me. I actually wasn't. But when I started to say that, I thought, I guess this kind of pertains to you too. But I wasn't really (laughs) thinking. I was actually thinking about someone else. Yes. Well, I was laughing because I was like, well, I joked and I was like, well, we've been that person too. And then I was like, oh, wait, I think she's talking about me. I think I was no. the person. <laughs> I saw you laughing, but I thought it was because you knew who I was talking about. But I wasn't talking about no. you. But no, I think that just like, I think that I have been the person who's been pushed away by people. Like, yeah. I mean, who has pushed people away because they've been too, like they've, like I've dated someone for a few months and like, I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm just kind of like, yeah. you know, seeing, like getting to know this person yeah. was the person for me, but I was just getting to know them. And I think that pe- the people who were so hard on me and told me like, 
this is so wrong. You shouldn't be doing this. You shouldn't date them. Da, da, da. And like, you should break up with him. And we're so hard on me. I think those are the people who have pushed away the most because I was like, just let me figure this out. Yeah. I'm going to figure it out, you know? Yeah. And eventually I would, month later, I would figure it out and be like, yeah, this isn't the person for me. And I think that some people, and I think obviously you should know your friend, like what kind of friend this is, you yeah. know? And kind of obviously see where they are in the mm-hmm. situation. If they're really deep in it, then you may have to, you know, have an intervention yeah but i think like if your friend is just like kind of you know getting to know people and maybe you don't approve of it i think that you just have to be careful to not try to control someone because yeah. if you are anyone like me i did not like to be controlled i didn't like for someone to tell me what to do or tell it's me true. everything i was doing wrong and a lot of things i just had to figure out on my own and so i think that sometimes you have to just kind of Know your place and be a friend and be loving, mm-hmm. but not push people away. And that's the time where you really begin to pray for people and intercede for people because there is only so much that you can do. And like at the end of the day, the Lord has changed their heart. They have to go through it. And I look back at my life and I'm like, that would be so hard for like even like mom to watch me go through the, some of the things that I went through, or put myself in the situations mm-hmm. that I put myself in. But mom didn't like, you know, over control and try to like, you mm-hmm. know, force me to get out of relationships that I should have been out of. I mean, she mm-hmm. suggested and she spoke truth, but I was like not in the place to listen. And I'm like, man, that would be so hard for a mom to have to watch that. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, like I needed to go through those things to mm-hmm. become who I am, you know? Mm-hmm. And so part of me is really thankful for going through those things, even though it was hard. And so keeping that in mind for other people is mm-hmm. like, look, I do not think this is right for them, but they are going to have to make the decisions that they mm-hmm. are going to make in their life. And I can pray for them and I can speak truth when I want to or feel led to. But at the end of the day it's their yeah. decision to stay or leave and so yeah i think at the end and of the i day, think it's to. important too that you like realize that like they still need you as a friend and like if you're gonna just be so hard on them all the time then they're going to be in this not so great relationship alone with no yep. friend you know yeah and i think that you would rather be with them and still there listening to them than them feel like they can't even talk to yep. you about it you it's know true. you'd rather like be the friend that they can talk to and still be honest, but be loving in your honesty and not so controlling. It's good. Okay, so we've hinted at, you know, parts of our story and stuff. And a lot of people actually ask what your testimony is. And I'm interested in hearing this because obviously I know your life, I know your story, but what do you feel like is kind of like your testimony, things that you've walked through that um, have brought you closer to God? So I feel like it's weird. I feel like... I'm literally 20 years old, but I feel like, like, as you get years past your, you know, like, when you come to Christ, I feel like you start to forget, like, what it, what all happened, you know? Like, I'm kind of like, when you asked me that earlier, I was like, what is my test ready? Like, it's been so long, you know, yeah. since all of that happened. So, I'm like, I don't really fully remember every single thing. Um, but we were talking about earlier, just, like, people who kind of feel like, that they may not have the most like crazy testimony or they may have like a boring testimony. And I feel like my testimony is kind of somewhere in the middle of that. I feel like I grew up um, like loving God in middle school, high school, middle school and early high school. I like super passionate about God, loved um, Jesus, loved the church and everything like that. And I had a boyfriend who I loved so much and we broke up and I was so sad and he was a great guy. Like, great Christian guy. And I was so sad. And I was like, why am I so sad? And I was like, you know, I think that I just like have been living, you know, this way for so long and I'm so sad and it's not working out for me. So I'm going to go try and live a different way. And so when we broke up, I was like, okay, well, I guess I'm going to try something else. Like that didn't work. So then I started kind of like just getting to know other types of people. And I started kind of getting into like a crowd that I wasn't familiar with, just kind of like more like wilder people or party people and started hanging out with them and kind of like just seeing a whole different side of life that I'd never seen before. I was not sheltered, but I was more, you Mm -hmm. know, I was in kind of a Christian bubble and I kind of started seeing other types of people and being friends with those types of people and stuff like that. And I kind of started going down a bad path, started dating people that I shouldn't have been dating. And this is where all that comes in, where everyone was like, you shouldn't be doing this. And I was like, I just need to figure this out on my own. And that's kind of what I did. I dated a few people that weren't 
great guys and I kind of like got through that and I was like you know and when the last one broke up with me I was like you know I don't think this works either and Mm -hmm. so I kind of just took a step back and was like you know like that's not that was not it and I think that it took me kind of like seeing what was out there to say like yeah that's not what I want Mm -hmm. and then I started um going to a youth group and I'd loved the youth group that I went to. I never went to a youth group that I like really, really loved before. And I went and was having so much fun. And I met Kaylee, who's now my sister-in-law. And she started to like mentor me and hang out with me. And I just like loved every second I got to spend with her because it was, um, she was like giving me like great advice and also just like loving me through kind of working it out. I was still figuring out what I was kind of how to get back into this after I kind of went a different way and she just like loved me through my mess of trying to figure it all out and loved me through my kind of like I was still in that place where I was like upset over these breakups but I knew they weren't for me I didn't I knew that these people weren't for me but I was still upset and kind of like teetering on the thought of going back to those relationships and she was like no like this is not for you and like you have so much better for you and everything like that and I think just getting a good community again like I just started going to youth group making great friends and like the church and everything like that and like my life really turned around just like being around the different kind yeah. of different types of people I feel like being around people who were not following Jesus was really pulling me down a bad path and was really like making me feel like so insecure and like so just like anxious and stuff like that and then when I started going to youth group and getting to know like all these great people and like having a lot of girlfriends and like having Kaylee as a mentor and stuff like that I started to just be like wow like I didn't realize that like people I honestly thought like I didn't know people in this town were like this like like loved God this much and so that's cool and I think like it just took me getting out of my comfort zone I did not want to go to youth group I was like I do not want to go to youth group that does not sound fun to me at all (laughs) and I went and like loved it had so much fun and like just being around those types of people was really encouraging and really like did a lot for me just to be around people who were kind of had the same mindset as me and really changed my life that's awesome that's so cool well I think it's so cool because like you know you mentioned is how some people are like, oh, I don't really have a good testimony or have a born testimony. But it says, I think in Revelation that, you know, the enemy is defeated by the blood of the lamb and the power of our testimony. So whether your testimony is dramatic and detailed and years of like pain, or your, you know, um, testimony is a little bit shorter than that. And it's like, you know, had a few years in high school or I went a little bit off the beaten path and then went to youth group and my life changed just simply by the community and by um, a, a mentor speaking truth into my life and seeing what God had to offer. Like, it doesn't matter like what the details are. The The main detail that matters is you were once dead and now you're alive. Like you mm-hmm. went from blind to being able to see like that Jesus Christ and the blood of Jesus saved your life. That before God, like you didn't have hope, you were anxious, you were insecure, you were heartbroken. And then because of the power of God, because of the resurrection of the cross, like now I have hope, now I have freedom, now I have um, this awesome community and these people and I'm a family. And so like, that's the power of the testimony. The testimony's power isn't um, based off of your mistakes. The testimony's like power is based off of Jesus rising Mm -hmm. from the dead, (laughs) like being raised from the dead. And so I think it's so important like all of us who are listening to be like confident in our testimonies um, because I could say the same thing in some ways you might say oh that's a bit of a boring testimony but to me I'm like no it's not boring because I was dead now I'm alive because Jesus Mm -hmm. Christ saved my life because I was an anxious insecure person who was messed up in relationships and now I am a confident bold woman who preaches the gospel and has a family who loves the Lord. Mm -hmm. Like that's crazy. And only because my life took a turn for Jesus. And so I love your story. I think it's awesome. And like, I saw you then and I see you now and I see a new person. And I think like, that's the, that's the power of the testimony. That's the miracle that you are walking. And it's really cool to see and super proud of you. And you really did plug into that youth group and you and Kaylee are awesome. Now y'all are sisters. And how cool is that? It's so crazy. God writes a good story he does he He writes a good story let me see if there's anything else on here that we need to talk about let's see 
I feel like you really tackled it all, Bella. Everybody asked such great questions. Um, obviously, I had like 15 questions and we only hit the, the highlights. Um, some things people want to know are how you decorate your house and all the fun things because you're just so fun and cute. And so if you want to know more about Bella, you got to make sure you're following her on Instagram. What's your Instagram handle? Bella, Bella Rob, Rob Mayo. Mayo. Bella Rob Mayo on Instagram. Check her out. She's cute. She's fun. She's fashionable. She's faith filled. She's all the things. She's a great follow. Bella, I love you. Thanks for being on the podcast. I love you too. Thanks for having me.